Yo, Elliot, I hope you're doing well. Recently, I have been feeling called to religion. I've always believed in God, prayed and practiced ascetic disciplines, common to many, common to many faiths, but it feels like I'm missing something. I would like to submit to a definite path, but I can feel Satan is trying to talk me out of it. I was hoping you could rant about the beliefs of religion versus general faith in God and prayer life as something, uh, as some motivation. Specifically, I'm wondering about the dogma offers. Thanks for the work you do. So there's this, and I bought into this, I, I walked the path of the new age for a very long time because why? I resisted institutions. I resisted authority. And it wasn't until I started growing up and stopped being a, a, you know, a rebellious little boy, still fighting against my daddy, uh, that I realized I cannot be an authority if I can't submit to authority. That was mind-blowing to me. Not only did I realize the importance of authority structure, but also the structure of institution. Why institution is so important. This is what makes a king a king, guys. There is no king, and we talk about this program as a king transformation program because we do have an element of the king within each and every one of us. But you know what the king represents in us? Order. 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 The inner king is ordered to order. And so, have you ever heard me say, where the king is, order ensues? So wherever there's a king, there's going to be order. If we assert that Jesus is king, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is God incarnate, where he is, order must ensue. We could even take it as far back as the Old Testament, where if you notice, God approaches Abraham, who's a man of what? Order. He doesn't go to somebody who is in disorder. And a lot of the new age, a lot of the just spirit, somebody who says they're spiritual but not religious is someone who doesn't like order. They don't like structure. They, don't, they resent institutional structure. They just want to do what they want to do. They want to take bits and pieces and they want to play their own game and they want to just have their own spiritual experience. They want my truth. And I understand the appeal of my truth. But my truth has no foundation. It has no tradition. It has no authority. It has no structure. It has no history. It's just my little ego making up whatever I want based on what I see here, like, and, 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 and experience. I can just pick and choose. At a certain point in my life, I realized the futility of that, and I also recognized the immaturity of that. That's a very immature way of being. It's futile because there's no, there, there's no ladder for ascent. There's no, there's no ritual. There's no ceremony. There's no form. Let me put it that way. There's no form. There's no discipline in that, right? Because if I'm my own God, which is basically what most spiritual people are, I'm my own God, then I don't have to be oriented to any discipline at all except for what I feel like. I began to see the futility in that, right? If you're still in that place or people are still in that place and that's where you are right now, that's okay because we're all on our walk in a different place. But it wasn't until I submitted to the authority of the magisterium of the church that I was born into that I began to see the brilliance in God's order. We say as Christians, there's one prayer that we all agree on, no matter what denomination. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that part mean? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that the pattern, the archetype, the, the divine spiritual structure consolidates into the third dimension. It, and this is why this is called the fallen world, right? Because 
if we weren't in a fallen world, we wouldn't need organizational structure. We, or we would, because there is a structure in, in the heavens. But we wouldn't need the concrete authoritative structures that we have that exist in, say, the church. But because we live in a, in a collapsed world, a fallen world. When I say fallen, I mean that we descend into physicality. Why do, I do, why do we call this lower than that higher? Because even in, in science, the spirit air, right? Spiritu y santu means holy breath. Holy breath, breath, you can't see it, but the molecules are there. But you know what? If you go outside when it's freezing cold and you do, you know what will happen? Those, that breath that you can't see right now, first of all, you start to see it. Why? Because the molecules are slowing down. You'll see it, mist. And I've heard when it gets really cold, you can go like this, and then crystals will fall to the ground. Falling. The breath falls. Spirit falls. What's higher consolidates. It collapses into this third dimension that we live in. So if God's divine order is higher, but thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we must have an order, right? The breath becomes ice and falls to the ground. The divine structure, divine order, they say hosts, the heavens, if they're to make themselves present on earth, must fall into form. That's why even Christ in, uh, Jesus, uh, God incarnate through Christ, he had to find a woman. He needed a flesh and bone body to be birthed into, right? Spirit, angels aren't born. God creates them. People are born. You know what that means? Flesh. You know what flesh is? Dense. You know what? Things that are dense do fall. Structure. Everything has an order. There's a, there's a, there is a molecular order to this. There's a molecular order to this. My house, my house was a blueprint before it became an ordered structure of wood and cement and iron and glass. There is no religion without institution, without authority. You can't get there from here. I don't care what the Zen Buddhists say about you sitting down and reaching nirvana. Maybe some special people are given graces to make that happen. 99.9% .9 of us need discipline. We need order. We need structure. We need a plan to follow. We need symbols, right? This is why I love the faith so much because there are symbols. What do these symbols do? They order your mind. That's what an icon does. People, they'll often say, oh, that's a, that's a graven image and that you're worshiping it. No, it's not. It's, an, it's a way to order your mind. It's a way to consolidate your thoughts. When you look at an image of the sacred heart of Christ, you are, order, you are taking the idea, and this is what the New Agers do, the idea of a mystical, disembodied Christ. He's an energy, and boom. This is why they don't like, they don't like icons, because it says that, no, God became an ordered organism. He became an organism. What is an organism, an icon? I'm an icon of my soul, right? There's an order in my body. There's lungs, there's a heart, everything here has order. So I, I, I know I'm going, on, I'm going on a lot of rants here today. But I just want to bring home the point that I have assented to, as well as 2,000 years of tradition, uh, the fact that we need ritual, we need symbol, we need authority, we need institution, we need discipline. Otherwise, you're just playing with yourself and that's what most spiritual people are doing they're playing with themselves and if you watch them just watch me five years ago watch me five years ago I'm floating all over the place I had no grounded structure whatsoever 
And I remember, I remember taking pride in this, that I started to give myself permission, and now I realize how diabolical it was, to change my mind. I went through a phase where I was like, my word meant nothing. And I was, I was allowing myself to be okay with that. I became very untrustworthy for, for a couple years, maybe three, four years there. I'd say between like maybe 2016, 17, maybe 2018, two or three years. I, my word no longer meant anything because I was spiritual. I remember thinking this. <laughs> I remember thinking this and being proud about this. And a lot of spiritual people, this is where they're at too. I, I used to read Osho. And Osho like sort of gave me this or, or pointed me in this direction that whatever I'm feeling or thinking in the moment is true and it's my truth and that I'll proceed from there even if yesterday I promised something else. I was a wreck. I was dabbling with it. I wanted to see because the new age is so appealing. It's so appealing. We become our own gods. That's the... That is the major heresy of the day. The major heresy of today is self-worship. What I feel is truth. And you know, because all you got to do is look at what they're doing in the school systems. Look at transgenderism. I feel like a woman. Well, I guess that means you're a woman. I feel like two plus two must equal five. They say, they're trying to say that math is racist. <laughs> math is as objective as you could possibly get. Math is racist. Math is misogyny. You know why? Because patriarchy is order. Matriarchy is disorder. This is why you know we live in a matriarchy. We live in a gynocentric, matriarchal, feminized world because we eschew order. Patriarchy is order. How do you know that even the word patriarchy, pattern, pattern is what order? Matriarchy, matrix. Matrix is just what you see, taste, smell, and, and are hypnotized by and believe is true, right? This is why COVID, the matrix says, y'all are all going to die from this. It's going to come and get you. You got to take these shots. It's not fact. Even science, science, the science, science is scientism now, but it's a science born out of the matrix, out of matriarchy, out of disorder, which basically means we don't have to tell people the facts. We just got to tell them what we want them to hear and people will believe it. That's pure matrix. The whole COVID just exposed the matrix. That's what it does. If you ever want to know for a fact that we live in a matrix, Look at what happened with COVID because it's not the divine pattern. It's not true. It's not. And I don't have to convince you guys because you know what I'm talking about. It's based off a of foundation of lies. Even where it comes from is lies. That can not happen in patriarchy because the masculine is the truth finder. The feminine is the feeler. And people just feel that this is true because, well, the TV said so, and I feel like it's true. Be careful about your language, men. Be very careful about our language because even our language has been feminized. Stop saying, I feel like. That is born of the matrix, of the matriarchy, and it's not patriarchal ordered thinking. To say, I feel like something, right? Like, I feel like an idiot. No. You are thinking you're an idiot, and that's not based in any facts. That's just your feeling, right? I feel like. They just say, I feel like. I'm using maybe bad examples. But if you ever catch yourself saying, I feel like, you know that you are being, you're deceiving yourself and that the word is a spell that you're under. Patriarchy is order and... Abrahamic faiths represent order. Judaism, order, right? Like Judaism has laws, right? Christianity is born out of Judaism. Judaism 
is a is a faith of laws, the Ten Commandments, right? Right. I mean, if you read uh, Leviticus, right, and Deuteronomy, and maybe Numbers. I, you know, I'm not a scholar, but I know that there are these books. And if you read them, I got to plug in my phone. The battery's going to die. That's what I'm using for my hotspot. It's a, it's a faith of order. Christianity didn't change that fact. Jesus didn't come to create disorder. He came to rectify the decrepit order that had grown stale and, and, and form without function. Right? That's what happens when something becomes uh, uh, necrified. What is that? Like um, all, old and stuck? It means it no longer has the, the, the power that it had. It's just stuck form, right? And so Jesus had to come renew that form. And he's like, you guys, you guys have arthritis in your form. You got you to work out that arthritis. That's not, that's not life-giving form. That's not life-giving order. And so he came, to, he came to elevate the order because Jesus was the first one to say that it's not even what you do. It's what you're thinking about doing that's important. He took it to that next level. He said, order your minds and order your hearts. That's huge. That was huge because there was a lot of people that was doing the things. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But their mind and their heart were in the wrong place. Jesus was like, no, 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 no. Oh, hold up. You got to order this and you got to order this first. And then what you do proceeds from that. So he elevated the order. Let me see if I'm answering your question. He says, I would like to submit to a divine path. Catholicism, my man. I mean, I have to say where I'm at, what I believe, right? There are paths. I mean, I think the Buddhists have the eightfold path, but like you do whatever you want. But to me, the Western tradition, the 2000 year faith born of the Christ, the God-man, who fulfilled prophecy and established his church on a rock named Peter. And he said, Peter established this order with my disciples, these apostles, and go and feed my lambs, feed my sheep, proclaim the good news. The Catholic church is born from that seed. Every other church, I, 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 took a, I got a meme right here. And I'm, guys, I'm just ranting today. You guys are the ones that are asking me about religion. So I'm just telling you, I'm answering your questions. Did I take a picture of this? Yeah. Who started your church? Lutheran, Martin Luther, Anglican, Henry VIII, Calvinist, John Calvin, Presbyterian, John Knox, Congre uh, Episcopalian, Samuel Seabury, Baptist, John Smith, so on and so on and so forth. All these religions are created by men. Catholicism, Jesus Christ. If I'm going to submit to an order, if I'm going to submit to an order, it's not going to be John Smith's order. It's not going to be Mary Baker Eddy's order. It's not going to be Chuck Smith's order, <laughs> right? Or Martin Luther's order, right? That's their religion. If I, like you, who are, listen, I resist, but I've assented. But if I'm going to do it, it better be worth it. And that's why I go back to the age-old, 2,000-year-old tradition of the church Christ established. It's the only church Christ established. You could do all the research you want about who created what church and come to the conclusion that Christ only created one, Catholic church. So, and I would say, or, I, I, I like to put Orthodox in there together. And I think at some point the Orthodox and Catholic will perhaps come back together again. Muslim Islam is a faith of order as well. In fact, the Muslims do a better job of maintaining their order than Christians right now. Don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole because I don't know en enough about it. I'm not interested in going down that rabbit hole, but it's an Abrahamic faith. It comes out of, the, it comes out of Abraham, who's a man of order. And the Muslims believe in order. So, but we all, we all fall too because you see where they're disordered as well. For sure, there's a lot of disorder. So, but if I'm going to get involved with the faith, there had better be authority, order, institution, structure, structure. 
was hoping you could rant about the benefits of religion versus general faith. Well, I am right now in God and prayer life as some motivation. Prayer life, I'll add to this also. I love Catholicism because we have formulaic prayers. We have formulaic prayers. We have prayers that come from Jesus, that come from the saints, that come from men that are far more brilliant than me. I have a whole book on deliverance prayers from Father Ripperger. So prayer life, first of all, the prayer life is very ordered. You've got the divine office, right? You've got the angelus, right? These are prayers that are said at 6, 12, and 6. Muslims know this too. Muslims do their, you know, they, they got their five times a day, right? So their prayer life is ordered, right? A lot of New Agers and even some Protestants, their prayer life is like, sort of willy-nilly. It's like, well, I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray for whatever I want right now. I'm going to make up some prayer. I'm going to just say what they freestyle. And I think Protestants that freestyle are pretty cool, actually. <laughs> I listen to some Protestants pray and I'm like, yeah, he nailed it. Wow, that's good, right? They're pretty good. They're pretty good at freestyling. But I'm, I don't trust myself enough to freestyle prayer, right? Again, this has just become... I don't want to become proud in my humility, but it's only because I've humbled myself that I could say the things and, and proceed in the way that I do right now. Only because I've humbled myself, I say, you know what? I better not freestyle prayers, <laughs> right? I want to get it. I want to get it right, and if I'm going to get it right, I'm going to get it from the pros. So I have this little book here where I've got all, all my favorite little, all my favorite prayers, right? And and they're all like they're written by saints. So I'm going to give you, you know, a short one from. Anyway, like the, the Our Father, Hail Mary, Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. These are formulaic prayers. And this is a ho whole book of formulaic prayers for deliverance written by Ch Father Ripperger. Ripperger, right, for all kinds of reasons. So as far as prayer life is concerned, I want a structured prayer life. I don't know about you guys, but I need discipline. I need structure. I need form. And it's the same way with my prayer life. My, I'm not at, to the point where I can just have a mystical freestyle prayer life. I can't. I'm not that good yet. Maybe I know some people watching this, they're like, Elliot, maybe one day, or maybe they can do it. If you could do that, that's fine. I want to be told what prayer to do and when. The Angelus is a beautiful way to begin your prayer life, right? Because the, the rosary is tough. You go to pray the rosary three times a day, you're doing 150 Hail Marys, and it takes about 20, 30 minutes if you're doing it right each time. I have a lifestyle that, that lends to that. By the glory of God, by the grace of God, I have a lifestyle that allows me to dedicate to that kind of prayer. The Angelus is very simple. It's three Hail Marys along with the, 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 uh, a recount of the incarnation, right? Just a few little words done at 6, 12, and 6. If you want to get into a structured prayer life, I would say begin with the Angelus. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. The A-N-G, the, T-H-E, A-N-G-L-U-S, A-N-G-E-L, Angel Us. And the reason why I call them Angelus is because it's a reminder of when the angel came to Mary. God made his self on the scene through Jesus, but in a word, it was Hail, full of grace. Those are the first words that, that's like the trumpet that sounded, Jesus is coming. It was the angel Gabriel whispering to a 15-year-old girl saying, hail, full of grace. He's basically like waking up Mary. He's like, hey, girl, you are full of grace. The Lord is with you. And then he asked her hand in marriage, essentially, <laughs> right? The incarnation. So it's just a reminder of that at 6, 12, and 6. And because it's three times a day, you, and it's three Hail Marys, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a bringing to mind the incarnation, it's a meditation as well. So 
Structured prayer life. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And so I'll leave you with that, dude. Hope that helps. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.